Greetings. Hi, I'm Dave again, CEO of DNY Laboratories, and we're the manufacturer of a product called Double Helix Water. Now, this is the fourth in this series of some videos we're shooting on trying to give a little information about what Double Helix Water is about. And what I want to talk to you today is on a subject of self-healing. What is that, self-healing? Well, basically, an uh, interesting story. Uh, uh, a man that lives not too far from me had a horrible accident and was life-flighted to a hospital uh, and uh, had internal bleeding, had crushed bones, and he was uh, taken to the closest hospital. And uh, it just so happens his son was the emergency doctor on, on call. And his son... Uh, did the emergency surgery on him and basically saved his life. Stopped the bleeding, uh, stopped the internal bleeding, and set the bones and uh, put him back finally in uh, intensive care. And he told his father that uh, uh, after all that was done, he said, now the real healing is up to you. And I think that's very, very, um, it's an actual uh, uh, true statement. You only heal once the bones are set and the tissues are sewn and the bleeding is stopped and uh, once, once trauma medicine has done its phenomenal job to keep you alive, in the end, you heal because of the information that is stored in your genetic code. Basically, that code inside of DNA is uh, a blueprint of how to fix the body. And when that blueprint breaks down, you get sick. Now, interesting enough that we look at diseases like cancer and other life-threatening illnesses, they're basically when the immune system fails to recognize uh, a good guy from a bad guy. You have a little cell called a T cell. And what happens is that when a viral cell, like a cancer cell or something, comes into the body, that T cell is supposed to recognize that cell as being a bad guy and to kill it. And it, it gets that information from its stored information in its DNA, from its genetic code. In that code itself, it's just like he has a book there. He can pick up a book and go, oh, well, I know that guy. He's a bad guy. I need to kill him. And I need to send this killer cell over there and kill him because I don't need him to grow in my body. And so there really is a code in the body, uh, a genetic code. And how did we get that code? Well, if we look at it, we, we, we've been around as DNA at least. Now, I'm not talking spiritually. I don't want anybody getting, I don't want to get in a fight with anybody about religion. I, I'm simply saying from my body viewpoint, from a piece of meat here, this, uh, the DNA that's inside of me has been around forever. Um, you know, 3.5 billion years is when, when life somehow began, or at least is considered to be the time frame it began on Earth. So, so let's look at that. We've got 3.5 billion years of genetic engineering going on in this body. It ought to be a pretty good, pretty good uh, engineer by now because the guys that made the right decision in the past are alive today, and that, that genetic code is, is here. The genetic code in me has to be right, or I would have died a long time ago. This, this genetic line would have disappeared. So, if I've got 3.5 billion years of genetic engineering, how could I get sick? Well, let's look at that. Why am I getting sick? Or why do, why do we have such sickness around us? Well, from a physics viewpoint, it's not that difficult to understand. Because since the Industrial Revolution, the last three generations, we've got to say that those last three generations have been bombarded with at least 100,000 basically to them, new toxins, new chemicals. There's about 100,000 new chemicals that have been manufactured, man-made in the last 100 years. And we have them in our clothes, we have them in our foods, we have them in the th things we drink, we have them in the air, we have them in the water we drink. So these new chemicals 
our body's never seen for three and a half billion years. And now within the last hundred years, we're constantly being bombarded with these things. And interesting enough, if we look at the last three generations, and we look at this last generation, autism has just gone through the roof. Well, why is autism going through the roof? Well, I think it's going to even get worse the next generation because what's happening is that genetic code, which we have been building for 3.5 billion years is being cluttered with toxins. Now let's get a, let's get an idea of what that would look like. I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to stretch it all the way across a football field, a hundred yards or 300 feet. So that, that, that length of time is going to equal 3.5 billion, billion years. Let's just use it as a timeline. So how, so how much is an inch? Every inch of that football field would equal 1 million years over 3.5 billion years. So the, we're now in the very last inch of that football field. That would be present time would be the very end of the football field. So how, how much of a sliver would be equal to 100 years, which is basically the time since we began manufacturing all these chemicals. Well, the last hundred years, you would have to take a hair off your head and you'd have to lay it across the end of that football field. That hair would, uh, a hair is about a hundred microns. A micron is a millionth of a meter, but that hair, as you laid across the football field would be too much. <laughs> you'd have to cut that hair in about 50 pieces and that tiny little sliver would equate to the timeline in which we've just changed our entire environment. That, that 50th of a, or that sliver of that hair would equal the time when we've changed as far as a race, everything about our, our environment. We've introduced a hundred thousand new chemicals. So anyway, that's, I think that's, Yen and I are pretty convinced that that's why we're getting ill. And that's why the race is actually getting weaker every generation because we're basically poisoning ourselves. We're getting more and more toxins in our body. So what, how could this little water particle then be of effective in, in helping us? Well, if we look at this water particle, Yen and I are very, very certain that this is a fundamental water particle. In other words, it's, it, it is where, uh, and why we call it double helix water. It's, it's like a, a fundamental particle of water. It's probably where water life came from water. It was probably when this particle formed, it was the point in which, uh, DNA began. That's, that's our theory. And, um, uh, because when we give this water to people today, we find remarkable changes in them. We find that they, uh, through a, 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 and I got to tell you right now, this is not a drug. This is not a chemical. It is not a medicine. It's not here to cure or treat any kind of diseases. But when we give, when people take this water, they have remarkable health benefits. Now, how could that be? Well, and we look at the fact that there was an original genetic code. There must have been something that started life at some point in time. And then that code, when I, when I say genetic code, what do I mean by genetic code? I mean, basically some kind of a binary code, a plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus. It's how things bond together. And it's why this water forms a double helix when you concentrate it, because the little particle has certain ways that it will bond and it only bonds in double helixes. So, we believe that it's almost like reboots the genetic computer. Now I know that's a little far fetched, but it's the effects that we see on people, uh, that drink this water. It's, it, it has such a fundamental basic strengthening of that original intention of the body, which is simply to survive. So anyway, we're that, I just wanted to bring up that this on this video and we're, we'll talk more about some other aspects of double helix water in the next video. Thank you.